Hey there, Psych2Goers, welcome back to our channel. Have you heard of the narcissist and empath duo? These people fall under opposite sides of the axis of empathy. The narcissist craves excessive admiration from others and has an inflated ego, while the empath is someone who can perceive and even take on others' mental or emotional states as their own. More on that later. Before we begin, please take note that this video is not made to attack anyone who may display these signs or anyone diagnosed with a related disorder but rather to understand them and bring more awareness to the topic. So what makes this dynamic so painful? Let's explore this together. Number one, who are narcissists and empaths? First, let's get to know the two main protagonists. Narcissists are people with inflated egos and zero empathy towards others. They have a high sense of self-importance, an excessive desire for attention and admiration, and a tainted view of empathy. They crave special treatment and will react in rage or outbursts if things don't go their way. Empaths, on the other hand, are highly sensitive people, owning an overabundant supply of love and admiration to give. They absorb the emotions of other people readily and compassionately. What's more, they're also incredibly gifted in connecting with another person's thoughts and feelings. Number two, the empath and narcissist at first sight. Opposites attract, or so you've been told. At first contact, it may feel as if the two of you complement each other's needs perfectly. An empath is a natural when it comes to sharing and finds the narcissist as the perfect source to attune their emotions to. A narcissist loves someone who would tolerate their actions. They find in the empath an eager ear, a constant source of appreciation and attention. A narcissist excels in drawing the empath who's willing to listen, all starry-eyed. An empath's emotional needs are completely ignored projecting only themselves onto the empaths. An empath is a giver and they give generously. A narcissist is a taker and they always want it their way. The imbalance has begun to show already, right? Number three, the poisoned apple. So why fall for the wrong sort? Narcissists hide behind the mask of irresistible charm. Their charisma and conduct on the surface level can draw all sorts of people under their spell, especially empaths. This facade attracts the empath as they find an avenue to pour all that compassion into. A narcissist seems to take an empath's genuine empathetic world by storm. As emotional sponges, they play right into the narcissist's hands. Once a positive first impression is formed, the empath becomes incredibly loyal to the narcissist, loyal to a fault. Once a narcissist picks up on this, they start to reveal more unpleasant sides of themselves. Uh-oh. Number four. Trouble in paradise. What is essential for love to flourish? Is love the only ingredient for a happy relationship? Both these individuals speak different love languages. When put in close affinity, one has the potential to become almost parasitic for the other. In a healthy relationship, empaths are one of the best types of people to foster a relationship with. They care for their partner with all their heart and they always communicate their feelings openly. But for a narcissist, it's not so easy to take into account the feelings of others. Unknowingly or otherwise, they're capable of hurting the empath as the two operate on very different wavelengths. One is ready to bring down the stars while the other is only interested in demanding more. Sigh. Number five, let the chaos games begin. Psst, come closer to your screen. Let me tell you a secret. A secret about a hidden gem, a free hidden gem. Something that costs you nothing, but will change everything. It also happens to be the greatest mobile game of all time and our sponsor today, Raid Shadow Legends. With Halloween around the corner, Raid's spooky Halloween champions are here. Let's rank Raid's best Halloween champions. Madame Ceres is the most popular epic champion for Platinum Tier Arena. She has an amazing debuffer and buff stripper. Brachus the Shifter. He's got some powerful moves, one being the Full Moon Rampage which is a single target attack that hits six times and heals him for 25% of all damages made. Lastly, we got Little Miss Annie, a legendary attack champion from the faction Undead Hordes, whose void damage has a 50% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns. Raid Shadow Legend is one of the best RPG games ever made. No other game dedicates so much love to the character designs and voice work. It's bigger, busier, and better than ever and there are some giant updates coming very, very soon. So there's really never been a better time to get started. And this month, Raid's got a non-stop schedule of special events and activities, including an absolutely jam-packed Halloween lineup towards the end of the month. 
We're talking incredible rewards, tournaments against other players, special fragment events, and to get some brand new legendary champions, including a very spooky Halloween challenge, and so much more. Join Raid Community with over 25 million downloads and over 200,000 clans created. Get your hands on this game now, whether you are on your phone or down on your desk. Available on Android, Apple, and PC. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code, and you'll get an epic hero Chonaru, which is amazing in the Doom Tower. 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. How do narcissists take advantage of empaths? One tactic is a full revelation of their bad side. They start to take advantage of the empath in abusive ways, realizing that their harmful tactics aren't met with any strong opposing reaction by the empaths. Empaths are forgiving beings, willing to be patient with someone else's personal growth. The second tactic is more sinister. Some narcissists are strategic and weaponize their use of empathy, sprinkling small doses of their artificial love and charm that the empath first fell in love with. They offer their love only on the condition of compliance. Soon they begin to blame the empath for not being perfect, but empaths believe they can fix and heal anything with compassion, saying things along the lines of, I'm not perfect, tugs at the heartstrings of the overpatient and loving empath. This hope of change is enough to keep an empath strung along for a long time. For empaths, removing someone from their lives can be an extremely difficult undertaking. They're true believers of growth and hope, even at the expense of their own well-being at times. Number six, recipe for disaster. What makes it problematic? What an empath needs to know is that narcissists are not people that need to be saved nor are they people that an empath should adjust to in hopes that they can still change. Narcissists can actually be perfectly aware of their actions, and when they realize that they no longer need you, they'll find it easy to step all over you. They keep track of when the time's right to employ a show of empathy to keep an empath from finding a reason to step out for good. This makes for an extremely problematic relationship that's founded not on healthy, growth-filled love, but rather on a constant push and pull trauma bond. Number seven. It all ends with self-love. So how can empaths deal with a narcissist? The key is to understand that each is responsible for their own personal growth. The first way an empath can shield against a narcissist is to say no. This in turn establishes boundaries. Boundaries are healthy for all relationships. Even if they feel harsh for an empath to build around, it gives them the strength to protect themselves from those looking to take advantage of them. This helps build faith in yourself and gain independence emotionally. Emotional independence can enable empaths to spot signs of abuse and gaslighting from the onset, helping themselves save themselves from impending heartbreak. Despite being wrong in all the right ways, the narcissist-empath duo is all too common. But that does not make one at fault for being taken in. With all the forces against you, what you do to get yourself back at the first hint of it is what counts. Narcissistic abuse is one of the hardest to detect, but once you do, you owe it to yourself to acknowledge and deter it. The question here is not why you fell for it, but what you can do to rise from it. Were you aware of this tale? Are there some chapters you think we missed? Feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts, experiences, or suggestions. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share it with those out there who could benefit from this. Don't forget to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more new videos. And as always, thanks for watching.